hold the same position, but now we're going to rock up and down. So we're going to create a little bit of a dynamic movement here. And again, my body's in this kind of reverse curve position. Hey guys, Dr. Will here. We're here in the dungeon of Aventura uh, for In the Gym with Dr. Will Part 3. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about core training. Obviously, uh, no matter what your goal is, if it's aesthetics, if it's injury prevention, if it's sport performance, we have to make sure that we're training our core, uh, but we need to make sure that we're doing it in a way that's um, efficient and effective, right? A lot of times we're focused on sit-ups and crunches and bicycles and all these exercises where we're, we're flexing our spine a lot. Um, but really what we should be focusing on is the core's function to be isometric, right? If you think about us hitting a baseball, hitting a golf club, hitting a tennis ball, oftentimes what's happening is we're rotating through our shoulders and our hips and our core is the thing that is creating that power, right? If we have too much rotation through our spine during those movements, we're going to lose the ability to generate force through the big muscle groups of our body, such as our glutes, our hamstrings, our shoulders, and things like that. So the first exercise I'm going to show you guys is called the hollow rock. To me, this is like, this is one of the, the best and least utilized core exercises because what it does is it helps kind of reverse this natural curve that a lot of people have. Most people are walking around in this kind of hyper extended position, right? Rib cage is flared, low back is overextended. And so what the hollow rock is gonna do is it's gonna put you in a position where your spine is either neutral or it's flexed a little bit. And so you're able to really work those low ab uh, the low, lower abdominal muscles, but also you're gonna get a nice stretch of your low back, okay? So I'm just gonna hop on the floor here. And for this exercise, we're gonna first start by flattening out the lumbar spine, right? So we're gonna to touch the low back to the ground. We're gonna extend the legs straight out, extend the arms straight out, and we're just gonna hold here, okay? If you're able to hold this position for 60 seconds, then we're gonna to progress to a hollow rock, okay? In a hollow rock, we're gonna hold the same position, but now we're going to rock up and down. So we're gonna create a little bit of a dynamic movement and again, my body's in this kind of reverse curve position. So I'm really working the lower abdominals and I'm really creating a good uh, distraction of the low back. Just like that, okay? Now, of course, there's variations where you can put weight into your hands, you can flutter your legs, but for most of you, just doing a hollow hold or a hollow rock is gonna be plenty sufficient because you're gonna have a little bit of a hard time getting into that position because most of the day you're in the opposite, you're kind of cranked into extension, okay? The second exercise is going to be an anti-lateral flexion exercise. Now people are often uh, doing things like farmer's carries, single arm farmer's walks. So I always uh, prefer to have the dumbbell in one arm rather than two. The reason is if we have the dumbbell in two hands, then the two dumbbells are offsetting each other, right? If the dumbbell is only in one hand, then we have to use our core to offset that dumbbell, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and grab 50 pound dumbbell here. I'm gonna hold this position and stand up nice and tall, okay? So from here, you can either go for a walk, right? You can walk forward and backward, you can go for a longer walk, or you can just hold the position, right? As you get better and better, you can start to do things like side bends, but first, I work on being able to hold a nice heavy dumbbell for 60 seconds. This is gonna work the obliques on the opposite side of the dumbbell, and it's also gonna help protect your lower back and keep your hip nice and stable, okay? And you should be able to do that exercise with a, with a fairly heavy weight. The next exercise we're gonna go through is the Paloff Press. So this is an anti-rotation exercise. So this is gonna work the kind of deep abdominal muscles, the ones that protect your spine, but also the small muscles of the low back. I also like to add a little bit of variety by going on a single leg, right? By going on a single leg, now we're challenging our unilateral stability. We're training the foot, the ankle, the knee, and the hip of the down leg. And we're going to press straight out and come out. Just like so. And you'll find this creates a very challenging balance. Uh, it's a very challenging balance exercise. And we're also getting a lot of core engagement without having to use lots and lots of weight. Particularly if you're a contact sport athlete, you're being knocked off of your center of gravity, knocked off of your, ba of your base of support. It's really, really important that when you're doing something like a paloff press, you're incorporating single leg stance because it's gonna help you, when, if you're running back, for example, and you enter the hole and you get hit from your right, you're gonna be able to brace for impact instead of getting your spine bent or, God forbid, getting your, your knee twisted. The 
final exercise I'm going to show is a good old one from Gray Cook FMS, which is going to be the tall kneeling chop. Okay? So, tall kneeling position is here, where I have my hips extended, right? So, we're opening up the hip flexors. And we're going to start from a high position and just chop low. Okay? What you'll notice is when I'm doing this exercise, I'm not actually rotating my torso or my hips. I'm, I'm using my arms to push the cable and I'm stabilizing with my glutes, my hamstrings, and my core, just like so. You can do this for both sides. Additionally, bonus exercise, you can also do a tall kneeling lift. It's going to be added to the tall kneeling chop. Over here, nice and tall. And go straight up like so. So very similar, but it's going to work slightly different muscle groups. And again, if here in South Florida, we have a lot of rotational athletes, right? Golf is super popular, pickleball, tennis. So if you're somebody that's constantly rotating, wanting to generate a lot of power through your core and through your hips, doing things like chops and lifts, even before tennis, even if you can get a band and do some of that, that's really gonna help prime your system to make sure that you're producing power very efficiently and your lumbar spine is not having micro rotations that are gonna to lead to things like lower back pain, sciatica, disc herniations, and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Uh, we went through five core exercises today. I think you should be incorporating all of them into your weekly routine. I think every workout that you do in the gym should have some type of core training in it um, because it's that important. It's this much of our body, and our low back is one of the more vulnerable areas, particularly as you get older if you're an active uh, individual. So give those exercises a try, and uh, check out the rest of our YouTube channel where we have an exercise library of even more core exercises. And if you're interested in individual programming um, and you want these exercises all incorporated together in a way that you can kind of go through a weekly routine, please reach out to me uh, at Miami Spine and Performance, and I'd be happy to help you. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Next episode, we're going to go through warm-ups and cool-downs for exercise to make sure you guys are priming your body properly for your workout and to make sure you're cooling down in a way that you're going to recover as optimal as possible.